Hi, and welcome to Trading with TK, teaching you to turn ideas into money. We're at www.tradingwithtk.com, and uh, this is the weekend question and answer where I try to answer some questions that some of my readers have sent in to me. And uh, needless to say, uh, the majority of uh, questions are all revolving around <clears throat> the short sale uh, rule change that the SEC made this uh, this past week, and uh, and the bailout plan, and basically the current situation, uh, what's going on. Uh, most of the questions were about that, so uh, that's what we're going to address. And uh, first, let me start by saying that. Um, my understanding of the change so far just says that you cannot short any new shorts in 800 uh, companies, which are all financials, because uh, that's where the government has their money, um, for 10 days. It doesn't say that you have to cover any existing shorts that you may have. One of my readers thought that maybe this might uh, create a, a huge uh, short squeeze stampede. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the case because uh, it doesn't say you have to cover. But on the other side of the equation, it removes a tremendous amount of people from selling. Uh, the, it's taking so much liquidity out of the marketplace that it's, uh, it's, uh, the, balance is, the balance has totally been upset because short, short selling adds liquidity, and it adds a lot of liquidity to the marketplace during the normal course of events. Now, speaking as a dealer or the specialist, basically, and for other dealers, uh, I can only speak uh, from my own experience, and that has been um, if I lost the ability to sell short, um, the the stability of the market would be so upset, I, I wouldn't even know what the, what it would look like. I'll give you an example. All right, let's say I'm running General Motors, and I come in and uh, <clears throat> and there's um, uh, and I don't have a position. I come in flat, and some little bit of news comes out. And I've got three buyers in the morning, and they've all got, you know, they've got, got 100,000 shares to buy. And let's say there's uh, there's no natural sellers till up two, three dollars. All right. If I lose the ability to be able to sell these guys the hundred grand up a half or up a dollar, whatever, whatever, you know, the 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 fair price it would be. Uh, if I can't sell that stock short, these guys are going to have to pay way higher for it. So he, you can see how, how the ability to be able to sell short adds liquidity. And uh, then after I'm short, uh, I, I, then I've got to get them back. So as the stock pulls back, hopefully it pulls back for me, uh, then I've got to be buying them back. So now I'm adding liquidity on the downside. And this is what happens with all dealers, okay? Anytime they're selling short, Nine times out of ten is because they're trying to take advantage of a little disparity uh, during the day. The stock gets a little ahead of itself. Maybe it's up 20 or 30 percent in the day, and uh, they're, they're selling. They're selling into it to help the buyers. Otherwise, there would be no. There's no natural sellers. Then later on in the, in the day, or maybe the next day, as the stock pulls back, they're all buying them back. So it adds liquidity to the sell side and back to the buy side. It helps the balance. Now I don't know what it would look like if they took that they took that ability away. Now I'm not talking about the guys, the big hedge funds, who uh, you know they find a company where the CEO is just doing a lousy job and driving the stock into the ground, and there's plenty of them around. Why they can't benefit from from finding out that these CEOs are no good and the stock is going down? Why can't they benefit? You know, they do the same thing on the long side when they find a CEO who's doing a great job. You know, like a Steve Jobs. Or uh, a Berkshire Hathaway guy, uh, or even Jack Welch years ago when he ran uh, when he ran General Electric, you know, and you bet on these guys on the upside and you profit. Well, why can't you profit when you find a bad guy? You know, um, that's my reasoning behind it anyway. So uh, it's really key that the uh, SEC uh, reinstates this rule and does not expand it any further. Really, is it's uh, a little frightening to this. See, think what the market would be like. I don't know why they even fooling around with this rule change. You know, a year ago they changed the tick rule. They they removed the plus tick rule. I, I was mind boggled when they did that. That rule was in effect since 1929, and it worked great. They had to change it. I, I still don't understand the reason behind it. Now they've got this problem that that change comes to roost, and now they change the rule to, in the opposite direction which even has more ramifications to it than the original change. So I hope they finally get this thing right. You know, it's uh, a little scary.
Okay, uh, the bailout. Um, I think it's going to work because I lived through, I lived through the uh, savings and loan problem with the uh, resolution trust. Uh, that idea worked. It took a little while, but it worked. And I know Mr. Paulson's behind this new idea, and he never loses. So I expect this uh, this is going to work out for him and the government, and I think in the long run probably for all of us. And I'll tell you why, because once they get this deal done, it may be a little wrangling back and forth with Congress, but I'm pretty sure they're going to get it through, uh, because they have to. Every time these deal makers and these government guys get their backs against the wall, they finally finally start to produce, but always, always a lot of pain before they finally realize it. Uh, and they're going to change a lot of rules for the banks and brokers. They're not, banks and brokers aren't going to be able to do anything that isn't going to be beneficial to the government. That's how the rules are going to be changed. They're going to be tilted again in the government's favor. That's why this resolution trust will eventually work over a period of time. Anyway, that's, that's my idea on that. Uh, you know, every time Wall Street comes out with a new product, a new fangle dangle, whiz kid MBA guy comes out uh, with this new product he develops, it works for a while and it blows up. You know, we had a portfolio insurance in 87, which came, made everything come crashing down. You know, everybody was on the same side. Then we had the long term capital blow up. You know, they came up with this new concept of how they were going to make markets. And it worked great for a long time because until everybody found out what they were doing and they all got on board. Then everybody was on the same side of the transaction. And when they wanted to unwind and sell, sell to who? Everybody was long and nobody else, there was no buyers left. And it all came tumbling down. Now this time around, it's mortgage-backed securities, another new invention that they came up with. So the next time anybody on Wall Street suggests to you that you should buy or get involved in one of their new products that they just came out with, just say no. It always blows up. Just stick to common stocks, preferreds, bonds, corporate bonds, municipal bonds, government bonds, treasuries. Things that have been around for a long time that have, that have, have passed the test of time. That's where you want to be with your money. Anyway, uh, until Monday, this is, uh, that's my take on it. This is TK signing off.